All right, let's check it out here. Welcome everyone. February 4th, 2018. Going to talk about a lot of things of the world of The Walking Dead, the Walker Stalker Cruise. Just some things there. So uh, post your comments if you're watching this later in the live chat, of course. Super chats are always welcome. I will be uh, answering whatever you want me to answer on there. And uh, yeah, back from the cruise. I'm excited to talk to you guys. I haven't, you know, taken a week off for the cruise. Last week was the cruise and I was in Cozumel, Mexico. Much warmer than it is around here. So uh, we got some cool stuff. Go over like you know, the picture of the photo op. Go over the photo op, the cast photo. I have a video of that on a uh, line on a video. And sorry, that glare is terrible on there. I'm just seeing it right now. So yeah, sorry, the glare was pretty bad from that. But um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of people on the boat with uh, Met Ezekiel, John Bernthal, Ross, and uh, Alana Masterson. And a couple of cruises ago, I met Tom Payne and a couple of people there as well. So I'm excited for everything for you guys. Post your comments, questions in the uh, live chat. A lot of stuff's been going around with The uh, Walking Dead with the trailers coming out. So um, I'm excited for it. I was hoping to get all the panels up this week, but with the other information coming around for the uh, trailers and the teasers, I've had to be able to do those. I've had to, my time has just not been able to do it for you know, putting the panels up. So I got the Ezekiel panel up. Hopefully you guys have checked those out. I'm excited to uh, talk about a lot of things. And it's crazy that comicbook.com is using so many articles or making so many articles from what was on that. So it was pretty crazy to think about. I was there for the panels that they are referencing that material. And we have those up in some parts already, but we will have more of those for it. So um I'm excited for it. So let's see. Got some questions here. So what do you think about Kirkman saying Carl uh, may or may not be like, may not die? Like, come on, Kirkman. If he dies, he gives us hope. So yeah, Raymond, I was there when Kirkman had that. And I have that panel question on YouTube. And basically, he was just saying that Carl is not dead yet because he's not. The episode has not aired. So people are like, oh, my gosh, he's still alive. There's still hope. No, there's not really hope by any means, but Kirkman is playing both sides of it. You know, I post the videos of what it is, just the same thing with the uh, Breaking Bad Blue Meth story with how it connects to The Walking Dead, if he confirmed it or not. And I'm just showing you the material and the video for it. So, but I'm uh, just showing you the panels, the information, and what I gather from it and what you gather from it. Maybe the same, maybe not on there too. So, um, let's see what we got here. Can you reply to my comment on Twitter saying how many likes to be in your book? Um, it's not by likes there, William Lee. It goes by donation to be in the books. So it's got to be that way to do that because people have donated for it and they were in book five and going to be book six. And I've wrote f three chapters of book six already. So there's going to be about 16, 17 chapters probably in every book is kind of the standard format that I like. So I'm getting there. So chapter four will be getting written pretty soon and I'm just doing very well with the chapters the material is flying out I'm very excited for it and I got some great information from the cruises some ideas with flying and stuff and picking stuff up so I'm excited for that do you think they will manage to keep Lauren uh, Tudor great question I don't know because I'm seeing mixed reports I've always thought that they make 90 thousand dollars for Andy Lincoln and then I saw another report that someone sent me a link saying they make 500,000 an episode so if Rick and Norman make $500,000 an episode, and if Norman is in a lot of episodes and Rick's in a lot of episodes, that's a lot of budget. And if Lauren Cohan, Maggie, wants that same amount of money, I don't know if she's really worth that. You know who is? Carol. Carol's worth that by far. And I don't hear anything about her you know, contract negotiations or what. I don't know who has contracts going into season nine, but I hope they keep Lauren Cohan. I don't know if she's worth the top, top tier money, but she is worth a lot of money. But being said, we don't know how much that is. Is it, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars per episode or is it $100,000 an episode? Because it's a big difference for that. But AMC and The Walking Dead, they make tons of money every 
every Sunday that the episode comes out. The marathon's on right now. They're going to have Everett and Fournette, the merchandise, all that. So I don't know. It's fair market value. What do you think someone is there? Carl, to me, that is one of the main reasons that Carl is not on the episode or in the episode in the series anymore after episode 809 is probably money, contracts, Stuff's coming around for season eight into season nine. Money, money, money. People want fair market value. They want money. They've been around since the beginning, season one, season two, season three, into season eight. People have been around since the first seasons, and if they're still around, they're like, hey, man, you got you to gotta give me a little more money for it. So um, uh, we'll see what happens with Lauren Cohan and really the rest of the cast. The money situation and the budget and the finances are a problem that will be a problem for the rest of the series as long as it goes do they have enough budget to keep these people so i am uh excited to see the future of the walking dead i'm really excited for the second half of season eight kirkman said some good things and the panels of people have said a lot of good things for the second half of season eight that trailer the teasers the two trailers looked great i'm excited for it how about you guys on it too so um andre why did Simon kill Jadis? Um, I say this in a video a while, a long time ago, when the information came out about it. So, spoilers, if you don't want to know some of the information, because spoilers are going to come out in this you know, video. If people are asking me questions, I'm going to answer it. So, there's going to be some spoilers coming in here, obviously, if someone wants to know about that. So, spoiler warning, stop watching now. Three, two, one, click off if you don't want to watch. Spoilers. Simon kills Jadis. Well, Simon doesn't kill Jadis. I take that back, Andre. Jadis is the lone survivor. Simon takes a group of saviors and kills all of the other scavengers because Jadis went with Rick to the sanctuary. So, Norman, Norman, Simon saw that and was like, what are you doing? You're playing both sides. You're not going to double cross us. I'm sure Negan is pissed that Rick and them are still alive. Simon doesn't really know what to do about them. He knows where to find Jadis and them. He's like, look, let me take them out of control, take them out, take control of the situation a little bit, and takes out a lot of the scavengers. Jadis is alive in that trailer. You see her crying on there too. And I got to admit, I was kind of feeling bad for Jadis, especially because we just saw Pollyanna McIntosh on the cruise and talking with her and the panels and everything. You're like, you kind of feel bad for the character because you know the actress. But, you know, thinking about it Jadis wise, the scavengers are a long time coming where they should have been killed off in season seven. But they got two seasons at them for some reason. And so uh, we'll see how it goes down. But Jadis looks to be the lone survivor of the scavengers for it. So the cruise was good. Hopefully you're seeing the videos that I'm posting on there about it, the panels, the question, the question and answer. And it's pretty cool to see that comicbook.com and other places are taking the information that I saw firsthand and posting stuff on there too. So it was pretty cool for some of the stuff. I do like this. It's the photo cover that, that this was in, was inside this. And... It's uh, pretty cool artwork, and I like the back artwork actually better because you see Rick and Carl, and on the inside, it's um, just a thank you thing with the picture was on there with it. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. We got this last cruise as well. That The picture was in black and white, as you see. The other ones were in color. I like the color ones better. We also got this raft. I'm probably going to put it online <laughs> for someone to buy. I might put it in a uh, big mystery box. When we have the bigger size level two boxes, I might put it, I, I'll put mine in there for you guys. Um, I don't need any more rafts, that's for sure, for, for it. So uh, let's see what we got for some questions. You guys are posting some good stuff on here too. Hopefully you guys are enjoying everything. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. Are you excited? I'm excited for the Super Bowl, not for who's playing in it, but just for the Super Bowl because it's a good day for, you know, commercials and entertainment of it. So the trailer was awesome. Yeah, I agree with you guys there. Um, how do you think Negan will react to the fate of Carl? He's going to be sad. Um, in the audio of it, Negan, Jeffrey Negan Morgan was asked a lot of questions. The microphones were crap on the mic on the boat because of the wind and the choppy seas and the rain. It was raining. It was just it was just terrible. <laughs> the weather was just crappy. Except for Cozumel, it was really nice and it was hot and whatever. But on the boat, it was pretty pretty crappy with it. But I believe Negan Jeffrey Dean Morgan says that he's he's gonna he would feel bad finding out about Carl. He didn't he couldn't say too much information about it. But I believe some of that was that he 
felt that Negan would feel bad finding out about the information, and I'm sure he will find out in Season 8. That's probably a kind of connection with Rick and Negan in the second half. Which the trailer looks great. The action continues. The fighting. I can't wait to see Negan versus Rick. Actual throwdown again. How they fight. And it should be pretty awesome for it. So, um, yeah. The same thing, Kelly. I agree with you that Carl... The death, the, how the portraying of the death is pretty bad, of how he just got bit. He survived this and the gunshot and that and the prison and going there and then going to the sanctuary. And then he's like, oh, yep, I got bit. See this right here. It's just crap. You know, I just didn't like that at all. So that was just the way they're doing it. The whole thing with Carl, and I think it's going to be okay, guys. I think the writing of it. I know people are going to hate the fact that Carl's gone. And just watching season three, season three, episode one, just was on walking on AMC. We were just watching it before I did the live stream. And it is kind of crappy to know that Carl's not going to be around. And you see them on there too. But when you watch the season three, which was awesome when they attacked the prison, very good storyline of the prison, you know, you see, you see Beth's gone, Herschel's gone, T-Dog's gone, Glenn's gone. You see all these people and you're like, man, there's only three people, four people left in that scene. There's two people. You're like, it's crazy to see that. And then you see Andrea and she's gone. And, you know, it's just, it's just crazy for it. So I am going to trust the writers a little bit until further notice, even though I, it just kind of sucks knowing the fact that Carl is going to be gone. But, you know, when I said that and we found out the information Way before, people were like, no way, you're stupid. It kind of feels good to validate the fact that our information is good, even though it sucks to lose Carl, because I don't like the fact that that storyline is a major change. If Maggie goes, if Lauren, um, it's going to be... If Lauren Cohen isn't back on the show, what are they going to do? Are they going to recast her? Are they going to kill her off? Or what? It just is a major, major storyline. And I know that Kirkman values the comics and the storyline way more than the show. And the whole thing is that Carl changing, Carl being killed off is a major change for so many different reasons of the future of the show, the whispers, so on and so on. But if they got rid of Maggie, that would be even such a big difference because who's going to run Hilltop? Carl's a good, you know, character for that for the future, but if you lose a major leader, that's right on par somewhat with losing Rick. Because Maggie's been there, Maggie runs the hilltop, Maggie has a huge storyline with Negan and this and that, and you know, the Whisper Award and everything. That's that's major storylines. And Carl's a big part of that, but if Maggie's there, it's it's just crazy for it. It just would make it would it would really suck. And you know, the show has to put up with a lot of stuff. When the, the comic stuff, there's no contracts of these characters. It's on paper. It's you know, Charlie Adlar drawing it. These are real life actors. And Lauren Cohan is in, you know, Columbia filming Mile 22. And then she's fielding other offers to be on other shows. So if the contracts aren't there, she might leave. And that's going to hinder a lot of things, too. And it sucks. The longer stuff goes around and the more stuff happens, people stay around and they want more money. The Game of Thrones situation is good because it's only eight seasons, even though we got to wait till next year for it. Eight seasons finale is kind of like you can wrap it up. And they kill people off left and right on that show. So there's only so many people in the original of it. So I... The future of the show of The Walking Dead can suck. It can be good again. It can be bad. New showrunners. I don't know what's going to happen with the future of the show because of money, budget. But I think the show is going to be around, but will the content still be good? You can still produce a show with less and less characters, but will it be great? No. We go to watch these characters to make a connection with them and see how they are. Like when I write my books... I want you to feel for these characters. I want you to like certain characters. I want you to not, not like certain certain characters. I want you to feel emotion with these characters. And when people die off, it sucks. But it has to make sense on the show. And in book format or comic book format, it's much different than on a show. And it, and it will be for sure. So um, let's see what we got for questions, guys. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this Sunday. Hopefully it's decent weather from where you are. I'm good to say that I'm feeling much better than on the cruise when I came back. I felt a little uneasy because it was the roughest cruise I've ever been on. And it was very, very much uh, time to get, get back to normal on there too. So uh, do you think Rick will kill Negan? I don't think so. I think people like Negan. He sells a lot of merchandise. People love Jeffrey Dean Morgan and they want that whole character to be there too. Negan will probably be around for into season nine and beyond that as well. Uh, when Negan is killed off, how will Rick kill him? 
shoot him the head, cut off his head, or with Lucille. Um, don't think that's going to happen to any of that. I'm not sure how Negan's going to die in the series because eventually it's going to happen. Just like it might be an epi- it might be in season season. It might be an issue 200. It might be the New World Order storyline has something to do with how Negan dies. I think that would make the most sense in the comic for the show. We just don't know yet. That's a long, long way around. So, would you want Rick to burn break Lucille in front of Negan? Um, I hopefully the the Negan Lucille situation would be much different than in the show than in the comic because the comic was kind of lackluster how Lucille you know I guess died the the bat died well the the, the wife died too but the bat dying the death was just kind of how it went down with you know the whispers was like all right, especially how the thing with Beta eventually pan- panned out was, was kind of was kind of weak for it. So, uh, do you think they'll uh, do you think they'll do with Maggie? Uh, Red Room review. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I, I'm I'm not sure what they're going to do with Maggie. It, it depends on the contracts. I would rather they recast the actress than kill her off, just because it would be so limitation. Like, who's going to run Hilltop if Maggie's not there? It better not be Gregory because we want to have the Gregory storyline of the comic connection. Who's going to run it? Enid? Carol? Enid wouldn't make sense to run. I guess they could, but that wouldn't be pretty. That would be pretty weird. I don't see Jesus as a leader. Uh, Carol, decent, could, but who's going to run the hilltop or the kingdom or, or what? So, Because if you know the comic, you know what's coming after the war. So the kingdom will eventually have to be run by a new person. Because Ezekiel, the story arc, is going to go away. And you thought it would be Morgan. It would be a good shot to be Morgan, right? Nope. Morgan's going to fear the walking dead. So that's gone. Could it be Carol? Yep. Could it be Jerry? Yeah, but do you see Jerry as a leader? I don't know. I think Carol could run the kingdom. I just don't know who would run the hilltop if Lauren Cohan leaves, if Maggie is gone. So it just doesn't make make that much sense. So um, Natasha, do you believe... Episode 809 will be a tearjerker. The impact of Carl's death will be felt by the characters. I, yes, I think Carl's final words and how they bring him out of the sewer and move him to the church and then eventually bury him. Um, it's going to be sad how he pro- how he projects, you know, you know, put your gun away. You know, it's the right decision to do. Carl talking to Rick and then Rick taking the note that he's going to be that because, you know, Carl's going to give out letters. He's writing a bunch of letters. So Carl is going to give Rick an, a letter. I don't know if he's going to read it right away. He might go out into the field and read it because there's a picture of him in the field. And if you zoom in, he's got it in his hand and he's probably reading it. And it might be Carl's voice doing the voice of what's on the letter. And it's going to be sad. Just like 701 was sad when Maggie, I, I teared up when Maggie and it was crying and she it was just so sad with Glenn and seeing it was it was very sad. Is that gonna be where we we are with Carl? I know Greg Nicotero said he cried when he was editing that, and that's the point of it. To make you feel that way, to make you feel sad about it. Now will it make sense going forward with the storyline with Negan and Rick and them? Because it could and it couldn't easily, because Rick and Michonne I break down the trailers, the three trailers, the teaser and the two trailers that are going on in the second half. And you can clearly see that Daryl takes a group to the hilltop and then Michonne, Carl, and Rick, they bury Carl and then Michonne and Rick go to the scavengers after Simon is there. So that would probably be episode 11 for that. But it's just, I don't know. It should be, it should be sad and it's supposed to be sad. And I, and I, People are saying that it's going to be great. Just like they said episode 100 was going to be this awesome big thing and it was going to be great. And it was kind of lackluster in a lot of things. So we'll see how it goes uh, in it. But I'm excited for the second half of season eight. I don't think you should give up on the show until you see episode 809 and then the second half of season eight and then make your decision what you want to do with it for you. So, um... (laughs) <laughs> how many long islands did you drink on the, on the cruise uh brian i don't i don't drink i had some of the champagne that they gave us the free bottle of champagne for being a previous cruiser but i only had you know a little glass of that because of my my crohn's disease i don't drink um really at all and i shouldn't because of my condition for my uh 
the inflammation is not good to have and alcohol actually causes inflammation. So you have to cut that down. Um, I had a little bit here and the, the drinks on the cruise are pretty expensive, but um, so I stayed away from that. Uh, what season do you think Maggie will have the baby? That's a great question, Haley. That depends on the contract for season nine because if Maggie's not there, what's the point of having the baby? Does the baby Gracie thing come into play? If Maggie doesn't have the baby, does she adopt baby Gracie? It could. Does she still have the baby? Does she have the boy? Does she stay on the show? Does she have the boy and then she dies? Who raises you know the, the boy or the girl, whatever she has? Does she have it off camera? All these things matter if her contract is not there. If she doesn't have a contract for season nine, she's dead and the baby's probably gone too. It doesn't, there's so many things that are bad for the situation if she does not have a contract or a several year contract for it. So um, I'm not excited for the contract disputes that are going on with Lauren Cohen because she's filming a movie now with Mark Wahlberg, Mile 22, and the contract's coming in and she she might not be getting a number. Her, her number might be way off. They could be for it. So I don't know um, what's going to happen for the future of it. The same thing with contracts of Norman Reedus and Andrew Lincoln. The latest I know is they don't really have a contract just yet for season nine. I'm sure they will, especially if they bump up that number. But you have to think about it. Norman Reedus, Andrew Lincoln, Melissa McBride, the original three. They should get paid the most by far. Carl Chandler Riggs wanted more money. He didn't get it, got killed off, and he's gone. Regardless if that was the reason or it was... It had to be somewhat of the reason for money. If someone wants, you know, three hundred thousand an episode, and they're like, "No, you're going to get ninety thousand episode, three hundred thousand, ninety thousand, big difference." They're like, "We're going to kill you off. See you later." It's easier for the shows to kill people off than to pay them sometimes, for sure. So, uh, M King, what do you want to know about the trailers, guys? I'll I'll answer, you know, because I I did a breakdown of them, and I thought I did a pretty a pretty good thorough of that because the teaser. That was smaller. I did a good that. And then I found the leaked one that came out that wasn't the best quality. And then AMC just put out the trailer, the same trailer, but better quality. So I could see that the scavengers were all dead when Michonne and Rick were climbing over the debris and they were in there. And they probably see Jadis, you know, above them crying. And it was a little sad for sure. Um, but... Uh, I'm excited for the second half of season eight, guys. I can't say it enough. Hopefully you are too. Um, they are in Walker Stalker. Sydney is going on right now. And it's kind of crazy to think about some of the people on the cruise flew to Los Angeles and then they flew to Australia. Pretty cool stuff. You know, the only thing on the cruise I would have liked to have was bed weather and smoother seas, of course, was a couple of different guests. Michael Traynor is actually pretty funny, but, um, I don't know what uh, they could have brought in, like Simon or something like that, too. So um, let's see what you got. Uh, I just noticed that CT, where is your whisperer question? You say I'm skipping and I'm not skipping anything. I'm trying to talk and do this and, and along with answer your questions. So uh, let's see where you're at here. Um, do you think the whisperers would be as an impact as the comics, CT? Yes, um, I hope so. I hope the whisperers come back a huge force. Hopefully that brings a lot of people back to the show. Will it? You know, if they were Glenn fans, they probably don't watch anymore. Abraham fans don't watch anymore. If Carl fans are you still going to watch, people say no, people say yes. I don't know. But the whisperers are going to be a good, good story arc for the show. It's going to be more walkers, more connections with that, more villainous role. I'm not sure if people want to see Negan and Rick team up or what happens with that, but I would like to see the Negan whisper, Negan alpha connection for it. I would like to see the whispers come back around. So there you go, CT. That's your answer for it. So I'm just trying to maintain the, the questions here as well. So um, Haley, you're asking some great questions here. How is Enid going to cope with Carl's death? Uh, you see in the trailer, she's struggling with it. Either she's hugging uh, Aaron after she killed Natanya at Oceanside, or she's seeking comfort from Aaron after the death of Carl. Um, but it's going to be tough. That was, you know, I don't know if she was in love with Carl or what, but, you know, it's going to be pretty rough for losing, you know, a friend, a love interest, or whatever it is in the zombie apocalypse. There's only so many people for that. 
Um, random question. What do you think about TBH 12 water consumption, 37 glasses a day? Um, I guess that's great. Um, that's a lot of water, <laughs> but 37 glasses, you'd be, you'd be living in the bathroom. That's for sure. Uh, I guess you're saying Tom Brady there, M King. I, I clearly, you're clearly rooting for the Patriots today. I'm guessing for that. Um, the old man from Alexandria, if he's like, should be Negan. Yes, they should have old man Negan with the long hair. They should do a lot of things with that. Uh, hopefully they do. If uh, it makes sense for the show. And I think it will keeping, if Carl's going to go, you got to keep Negan around for, for some of the, for the things for the, uh, Please answer, who do you think will kill Negan? Um, I think he dies by the New World Order. I don't think it's going to be someone in, you know, Maggie or anything. Because Maggie had her chance to do it in the comic. Clearly didn't do it and left with Dante and stuff. So that didn't work out. I think New World Order comes around Alexandria or something and that's what happens for that. Um, yeah, I saw the preview for 176. Um, I saw, you know, I saw the preview for that. And then I also saw the other cover with, uh, the princess, uh, fighting some of the new world order guards. So I'm excited for <laughs> what happens with that storyline. Cause I think the new world order storyline can be pretty good. Finally, like a government kind of thing coming to the world of the walking dead. Haven't really seen that in there for that. Um, hopefully you guys are checking out my book series. We have five books available now. Um, as of January 29th, I was on the cruise, but that, I've been on YouTube for three years now. So thank you all for joining me in my ride of the YouTube train from good videos, bad videos, learning things, doing all that. The book series is going very strong. I'm excited for it. I said, like I've, like I've told you before, volume two is going to start with book six. So... I got five books now available for you guys on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Kindle versions. And the story is getting better and better and more quality stuff in there for it. Uh, the writing's getting better. I'm putting more emphasis on the editing and everything from before I learned from that and mistakes on there. But um, it's a good storyline. And if you like The Walking Dead, you'll love the book series, that's for sure, because it's a lot of good stuff from that world that I bring to the table in my own world in for it. So I'm excited for you guys to check it out. And everyone that has checked out the book series, I believe has enjoyed it. So Kindle versions, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, paperback versions, um, start today, man. It's, it's a good series. It'll hold you over, especially over the summer. And then when I start book seven, you know, in a bunch of months where I'm gonna take a little break after book six, I'll open it up again to bring in some new people and some people who want to donate and still have the people who still want to be in it. And, you know, we'll still work on that whole thing for the future of it, for it, of the walking, of the walking dead, of Fight for Us, my book series on there too. That's book one, the beginning. And um, I'm excited for the future of that, guys. We're going to put some money together. We're going to be making t-shirts. We're going to be making hats. We're going to, we have stickers, we're going to be making more artwork. And then eventually when I get enough money together, because it's very expensive and I, and I had the script, I started the script for the comic book, um, the fight for us comic book. So we'll have illustrations going along with it. And the story is going to be very, very cool. Kirkman talks about things behind the scenes and it was very inspirational to me and hopefully people get inspiration through me as well. I'm uh, excited for people to do things with their lives that they're very motivated and happy to do. And I feel the same thing with listening to Kirkman when he was talking about how to be successful and put the time and energy and effort in and what's some, some things that worked for him and some things that didn't. And I'm kind of on the same track. It takes time to build it up, but I'm excited for it. And it has to do with your community, with input from you guys, from great storylines, from great things, from the Walking Dead family, the PT channel, and you guys for it. So I met a couple people on the cruise, and it was awesome. It's still kind of crazy surreal sometimes when I'm just walking to the cafeteria, the buffet, and this this girl was like, hey, are you PT? Are you on YouTube and I was like, oh yes, I am. And I was talking to her and her mom and it was just crazy. It was great. And I love doing that. I don't know if you guys, you know, watch the channel or whatever, because I was seeing people look at me 
and I don't know if they knew who I was or not. And I'm not going to be the guy like, hey, how you doing? And I, I mean, I'll still say hello whenever to people, but I won't be like, hey, you know who I am on, on the on YouTube? Because I don't know. That's just weird. So I don't I don't mess with that. But I, I am cordial. I was talking to Dee Dee and her son and a bunch of other people on the cruise that knew who I was. And it was awesome. So I um, I was very taken back by that. And I love talking about The Walking Dead and everything for you guys here, so it's pretty cool. So, Kara, you can get my books on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. There's actually a link in this video right here, the description of this video. It says, Fight for Us, U.S. Fight for, fight for you. It's Fight for Us, book one, link on Amazon. And you click on that link, and it'll take you to Amazon. But you can go to BarnesandNoble.com or Kindle versions and Amazon.com for it. So... And they're available on there today. All five books are on paperback and Kindle versions too. So um, I'm excited for that as well. Um, we'll see what you got. So, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, who else do you think will die this season? Um, my early picks were, it happened a lot of it. I, I didn't think Carl was going to die, but when we got the information, so I'm uh, going to do that. So Mike Allen, how can I get, autograph copies um i would have to buy them and then sign them and then you pay me directly and then i do that or i can meet you at conventions that you already bought and i could i can sign them i'm going to um walker stalker nashville in may i didn't buy my tickets yet but i'm going to go to walker stalker orlando most likely and then walker stalker um atlanta in uh october so let's see what you guys got so the the, the deaths I think that Jared will die. I don't know. I think Simon has a good possibility of dying. I'm not sure on the good guy side who is going to go. People were thinking about, um, you know, Carol might die or whatever, but they love Melissa McBride. They're not going to kill her off. She's She brings so much to the table. She's a great actress and does a lot of things there. So, um with that, I just think the bigger things would be Simon, possibly, and or Jared, for sure. So that would be my, my deaths for that. Um, looking forward to seeing Morgan and Carol killing all the savers. I am. I'm going in there, guns a-blazing. Um, I'm excited to see the sides with Dwight still playing both sides. Does he go back to the sanctuary? Does he go back in there and try to blend in, still get information, or does he stay on Rick's side? Because the time where Negan hits the guy with the, with the walker with the baseball bat and Dwight's there, is that a callback to a different time or what was it? So we'll see how it's all connected. I know there's going to be callbacks from episode 801, the flash forward with with different timelines for that in episode 809. So hopefully the story makes sense and it all connects. Um, we'll see how things change. I mean, exactly, Twitter. Dwight has two different shirts. So well, either he takes off the blue shirt and puts on a yellow shirt and changes his bandage or his wound from the gunshot. Um, so uh, uh, thank you, Asiello. I appreciate the, uh, the glasses. Um, they're Ray-Bans or whatever, I think. Um, so... I'm excited to see how it all plays out for the second half of season eight. I know people are pissed about the Carl situation and Kirkman is playing both sides where he's like, he's not dead yet. Maybe he's not going to die. You can watch the video for what it is. I have it on the panel video on YouTube. He's just being a troll, what people call him or what he's doing. I think he's just playing both sides and he's speaking the truth because he's just not dead yet. But he will die in episode 809. It's been confirmed by so many other places, by, you know, uh, Carl's <laughs> family or Chandler Riggs's family. And, you know, they, they say he was bit and uh, they play out on the show like they do, is what Gimple said. So, will Carl ask Rick to try and keep peace if possible for his death? And will Rick try to honor his wishes? I think so. I think it's basically said that for it. I think that's what happens with Carl saying, you know, that's going to be his last wishes kind of thing. That And you can see the final words in the trailer, basically how it is. And I, the big thing is, how does he go out? Does Michonne stab him in the head or what? Do we see it? Does it off camera? Do they bury him in there? I would assume that they keep him in the church and then they clean up the area a little bit and they bury him in Alexandria because you, you can't take him all the way to Hilltop, right? I mean, that would be pretty pretty far journey to take him away for that so sorry the the live chat is trying to jump around a little bit here so let's see do you think Dwight will kill Laura 
That's a good question. That's how I don't know if he goes back or not. I think either he Laura joins his team, works with him, or he stays on Rick's side and fights against Negan that way or not. But I would like to see Dwight sneak back into the Saviors and get some information and get help against that with uh, with Rick and use that to help Rick for it. So not sure. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to see Dwight kill Laura. I wouldn't want to see that personally. I would rather have Laura say, you know, Dwight join that side and help Dwight and they work together. I just don't I just don't want to see that happen personally. But um yeah, Carol being Lucille would be way too I I don't want to see that. I don't think any other person gets Lucille in the rest of the show. I think that the lineup was what that all was and that doesn't happen at all. Yeah, Jerry Lynn, Jared will die. Um it's in, you know, towards the end of the season and it will happen there. Hopefully it's very satisfying. That might be one of the things where that sets Morgan off, but it has to happen, right? You know, come on. Uh do you think we'll see something of the new beginning at the end of the season? I think so. I think they have to set up for season nine because what they do is they start, they have a storyline, then we have a little break, and then they set up the second half. They're, they're, it's in chunks. The first eight episodes are kind of set up, then the break, and then the second half episodes set up all the way, and they go into in the next season. They're going to set things up for season nine, and it's got to be the whispers have to come, right? So you see that in the video where Kirkman says, um, the new beginning, there has to be a little time jump for it. With uh, either Rick has the beard or, or he doesn't. So I'm excited to see what happened on there too. Uh, what happened to Sherry? I get a Sherry question every every so often. Uh, Sherry left. She's out of there. She you know went away from the sanctuary. And I think that's the right call. I don't know when she'll come back, if she'll come back. But I think she will just because she's connected with Dwight. And I think after the war, Sherry will come back around. Because Dwight needs something there too. Maybe he's with Laura at the time, and Sherry comes back and sees him with Laura. That would be uh, pretty interesting. I thought that would be pretty good. You think Comic Rick will ever get over Andrea's death? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, Tudor. Great question. I think that's that's going to be towards when Rick dies. Probably he's still going to be still. He's not going to get another love interest. I don't see that happening. I see. I mean, it could. Kirkman can do whatever he wants, and he writes how he writes. Some things are good. Some things he's bad. And I have to give credit to Robert Kirkman. In the one panel, he was talking about the writing of this and how he killed Abraham on the comic and the bolt to the eye and the writing was just bad. And he and he he owned up to it that the writing was bad. And it was kind of refreshing that he was like, you know, I make mistakes just like we all do. And it was kind of interesting. So when I put up that panel probably next week, you'll see the Kirkman stuff on there too. One of the best panels I thought was John Bernthal. I was running into John Bernthal kind of like all over the place. Like he was at the, he brought his son and in my one video, I talk about the cruise and we met John Bernthal in person for the picture and then Kari Payton, Ezekiel for the picture. And it was pretty cool. And then we saw John, I saw John Berthold come right in the cafeteria buffet area and took his son and they got ice cream from the uh, soft serve machine. And I saw the whole thing and I was like, wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty cool that he came in, got some ice cream and then left. That was pretty interesting. And then he left again. And then I told you in that video that I saw John Bernthal and um, Alana Masterson at the airport. They were on the same flight together. They flew southwest, which I thought was pretty cool. They flew um, from New Orleans to Los Angeles. And it was probably a direct flight, so they did that. He also liked the hat right here. And uh, he said it to me directly on the video when you see John Bernthal come in. He's like, I like that hat. He's talking about this one right here, which was pretty cool. So, uh, Andrew, will Daryl die in the second half? Uh, no. Daryl Dixon will be on the show for a very, very long time. People uh, like Daryl Dixon. I think majority of people like him. Some people don't. But I like uh, Daryl Dixon, Norman Reedus. He brings a lot to the show. And he's also just for the show. He's not connected for that. I like some of the characters a little bit more like Jerry, Simon, um, you know, and Daryl and Merle, of course, for that. So, hey, everyone, just some people joined me for this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for the Eagles, the Patriots, the commercials? I got to go for the commercials because I don't care about either team here. But um, how you saw that I already answered that question on there as well. So what are you guys doing anything for the party today? Going to a place, having people come over, hanging out at the house. I'm going to be hanging out at the house 
with uh, my wife and I watching it on the big projector that I have on the wall in the, uh, the other room that I'm going to hook up the cable box to the projector and put it on there. We did it a couple years ago for not last year because we were on the cruise for that. But for this one, we're going to put it on there too. It would be on the wall and it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool experience to put on the projector for uh, the size of the game. And uh, my wife's excited for the Justin Timberlake halftime show. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't mind Justin Timberlake, but we'll see how the performance is. His new song is just not that good at all. I think it's pretty crappy, actually. So will they do a throwback to Andrea and Coral kill himself? They could. I don't know. We'll see how it goes down for the Carl situation. It's either Michonne or Rick or Coral takes him out. There should be like a bet line for that. You see, how will Carl die? Carl kills himself, Michonne, or Rick? I don't know. So I think that would be pretty pretty cool for it. Um, I would like to see Carl take himself out. I think that would be pretty interesting because that would be a good callback. This Again, this is callback season. Season 8 is the callback season to prior seasons. Um, I'm excited for uh, to see it. And I don't know if people are. I want The Walking Dead to be good. And just watching the season three, and you just feel like season three, four, five, and even six to me were good. And then the storylines have just been a little crazy. Too many characters, too many things with, you know, all everything. The storylines, was it this? Was it Negan? I think it can be good again. I think the whispers can bring a lot to the table for it. Um, I'm excited for it. I can't say it enough. I just am uh, i love the walking dead coming back in three weeks guys it comes back in three weeks from today february 25th it'll be back and then kirkman confirmed it i already told this in another information that i think it's april 15th i think it's what it is the same sunday you have the season eight finale then it goes right in to fear the walking dead season four premiere so i think that is pretty cool how they're going to connect the shows and it just makes sense that morgan leaves and goes right into texas and goes into that so talk about that in the panels too got some good information on it i was excited to see robert kirkman on the panel he did his own panel and then he did the panel with robert uh, robert robert kirkman norman Reedus, and jeffrey dean morgan and hopefully you've seen the video when they come out and they take the, the cast photo it's pretty entertaining with John Bernthal throwing the football and stuff around. And, you know, the one lady, I, I was in this cruise group, and she was like, I caught the football the first time and couldn't throw it back and couldn't reach the the uh, the, the stage. But it's pretty entertaining on there for, for the couple-minute video. I talk about T-Dogs having a good time, too. Irony signals. And people love that guy. He's, he's a funny, charismatic person on there, too. Uh, do you think someone will get bit in the swamp? Maybe it could be a smaller Alexandrian, but they showed the Rosita thing, killing a walker like so much. But I would assume the Sadiq, Daryl, Rosita, they make it through okay. Tara, Tobin, even, you know. Tobin's got to do a little bit more for me. I mean, come on, do something, Alexandrian Tobin. Come on, buddy. But I think a lot of people will be okay on the Alexandrian side. Um, I want to see uh, the connection with Heath come back around. There's actually a great question in the Tara jesus panel that i'm going to post probably tomorrow maybe later today it's three parts i mean it just takes so much time to break the panels down convert them and then put them on youtube it just takes a lot of time and i gotta do some things but they will be they will be online don't worry guys the panels will be up probably they will be up by next weekend all the panels will be up and i'm going to put them up so because i put up i made a list of all the panels i got i got the ezekiel panel up already I got to do the bad guys panel, the good guys panel, and the Kirkman, uh, Norman Reedus, Jeffrey Dean Morgan panel. And then the John Bernthal one, uh, I got to break it up a little bit because he curses a lot in that panel actually on there too. And YouTube's kind of tough with the cursing. So we'll see. <laughs> he's pretty he's pretty uh, charismatic and pretty interesting. He didn't like the boat. It was very uh, rocky and he it was moving a lot during that panel. And he was pretty entertaining <laughs> watching John Bernthal be scared about the boat. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So I agree, Janet. Arat should be killed. I think Arat will be gone. I think some of the saviors like that will be um, uh, gone for it, like Jared and stuff for it. Uh, CG Central HD, most o- most underrated and overrated character. Um, good question. Uh, 
most underrated? I don't know. It's a matter of perspective, though. Like, do you think Carol is underrated? Some people would say yes. Some people would say hell no. Um, I don't know. It's a matter of perception. I, my favorite character is Michonne, um, and I like Daryl, and I like a bunch of characters. I like more characters than I than I dislike on the show, for sure. So um, let's see what you got for these other stuff. Uh, da, da, da. I like that they're playing some Walking Dead right now. I uh, I miss the olden days of it for sure. I'm going to go for another 15 minutes, guys. Uh, and then I got to start doing some laundry and everything, getting stuff set up for Super Bowl Sunday, Sunday. Um, like I said, I don't care who wins this game today at all. So, And yes, Kelly Simon is going to kill the scavengers, except for Jadis. Posted that in a video a long time ago when it came out, and then you know just validated that in the trailer because it's pretty hard to not to not miss that when you see the you see Jadis in front of Simon, and Simon's doing all the dirty work again. So I don't know. Like to me, Simon is actually scarier and more of a villain than Negan is. Like, Negan, okay, killed Glenn, killed Abraham. Terrible, right? He killed Davey, and then, but Simon just got that creepy kind of vibe on there, too. He shot that hilltop guy in the back, of the, in the head, in the back of the car. He's kind of got this weird, creepy vibe, especially with Gregory and everything. And I just don't know. I think Simon does the dirty work for it. So I, So I'm excited to see if... And when that stuff happens with Jadis and the scavengers, but also what we're hearing for the very end of season eight with Simon, with Simon potentially dying. Because Negan says, you know, I keep people alive. And they kind of showed you that Simon wanted to take control of things, but people weren't listening to him. So does he try to go outside the ranks and go above Negan with things? And then Negan comes around and takes out Simon. I could see that happening too, even though I do love Stephen Ogg and I th would hate for that character to be gone, but we do have to get someone of significance. Does Gavin die? Does Simon go? Do they both die? I don't know. I'm not sure how Gavin and them could be kept alive after Morgan and Carol are their taken out saviors. Does Morgan come face to face with Gavin and he kills him or does he let him go or does Gavin just get away I don't know if that happens in episode 809 but it could happen right at the early part of episode 8 because or season 8 because you see the second half you see in the trailer you see Morgan and Henry and Carol at Hilltop so they get there but Hilltop is small how can all these people fit there? How can all these Alexandrians, all these Hilltop, and all these Kingdom members? If you have Jerry and you know Morgan and Carol and Henry and just the rest of the smaller characters from the Kingdom, plus all the smaller Alexandrians, and you have Gracie, and you have Judith, and you have Maggie, and you have Jesus, and you have Aaron, and you have Enid, and you have Michonne, and you have all these people, and then Gregory, and plus the prisoners hilltop is going to be very jam-packed i don't know there's going to be a lot of hilltop scenes in the second half of season eight how's it going to be when you have um rick michonne gregory maggie the prisoners jesus morgan morgan sees jesus again how's that going to go down what are you going to do with the savior prisoners do you let them go do you kill them is it trade bait do you do something with that? So I'm excited for that for sure. Um, yeah, that's what the word is that the first 20 minutes is a lot of Carl stuff. And then, because it is, it's an extended episode, remember, guys, it's 82 minutes. And then, but it's going to be less content, of course. It's going to probably be close to an hour of content, but probably 20, 22 minutes of commercials. For sure, they got to get that money again. You know, AMC's getting that money, that ad revenue, those commercials, bringing in big bucks. So I'm excited for Sadiq, exactly. All these extra characters at the hilltop. Then they're going to go back to the scavengers, see what that is. What happens with Jadis? 
Does Rook kill Jadis? Does Jadis leave? Does she go rogue? Does she go on her own? I don't know. I'm excited. Um, so, Andrew, pick three people who you want to die. Um, what kind of question is that? Well, on the show, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing your character is there. I'm guessing you're saying characters. It would be Jared, Jared, and Jared. No, Jared, Arat, uh, Gregory. Yeah, so that, that would work for me. Uh, let's see what you guys got for any other questions. So I'm going to go for now about another 10 minutes. Um, book series stuff. I'll do my uh, one more thing of the book series. So here is uh, book five is out now. I made sure to be out before the cruise. Book five is Agreement. And uh, it's a pretty good story. It's the last book of volume one. And it sets the tone for the rest of the series, for sure. It's a good bridging gap for volume two. Volume two, we'll start with book six, and that will be entitled Keeper. And if you saw my other videos, you saw what Keeper means. Well, it means a couple of different things in, in that. But Keeper is uh, pretty awesome for the next storyline. And it's a good pivotal book for the rest of it. It connects a lot of things. It starts up some new parts. It brings in some things. Yeah, no, don't worry, MK. I'm not going to say any spoilers for it. But it's, um, it's a good series. I don't like giving spoilers about the book series because I want you to read it and be excited and to be a page turner for... Uh, for that so rm good got you got the first book you got the beginning beginning is a good book um it was my first book of it so it gets better and better and better the writing gets better everything on there too so the story kind of sets the tone for it um but i'm excited for it guys it means a lot to me when i'm writing it it means my emotions come through the book series i live through the characters you know i'm ryan basically in the book but when i talk about you know the characters they're loosely based about my friends and uh, my family, and it does mean a lot. I put myself in that world. I immerse myself in that world, and hopefully you feel the same way when you do read the books. And uh, it's a good connection of of just what a zombie apocalypse would be like in my in my life on there too. So um, I <laughs> see, I see, M King. You like four? You like book four is good, but five is. What, you don't like book five so far? It's a uh, it's a good connection. It, it connects the storyline for sure. Um, see, so I don't know. I don't know what that means. Is Maggie leaving The Walking Dead? Andrew, we don't know yet. It comes down to contracts. So they're going to start filming end of April, early May. It's February fourth. So you got February, you got March, and you got the beginning of April. So before you know it, we'll see uh, what happens with Maggie's contract and Andrew Lincoln's contract and Norman Reedus' contract. So we'll see. Contracts limit things. They they limit the future of characters and how they go. It's a shame. I think that had to deal with Carl. That, that some of that had to do with Chandler Riggs and Carl. That had to be kind of a situation there too. So um, if you ever need any soldiers for books, let me know, Mike. Yeah, no, I like your uh, opinions of things. I've done more research on the government aspect of it. I will definitely need your opinion down the road when uh, more soldiers and the storyline progresses. I don't want to give too much away, but soldiers will be definitely a part of the book series. Probably, you know, in volume three, because we're starting volume two now, but maybe towards the end of volume two into volume three. But soldier stuff, um, I'm doing some things with that with what they wear and the tactics that they use and whatever and you know whether it be delta force or uh, marines or navy seals or what because we got a lot of characters in the different branches of the military i definitely like because you know i have family members that were in different branches of the military and i had roommates that were in you know air force rotc and army rotc so i know some people that were in the navy and the Army, and the Air Force, and it's just pretty cool, everybody coming together, even the Coast Guard. And me being a physical therapist, I treat patients that are in uh, the military. They have TRICARE insurance, and I treat them, and they, they tell me about what they do for you know Coast Guard or, or whatever they would be, and they travel around, and I get to learn a lot of their stuff, and it's a pretty awesome experience, and I try to incorporate that into my book series. And 
It's also cool when I have your input through these live streams and also when people donate. I have characters in mind, but I put a little bit of people in the book series from them. Like if people have kids or people like this or people like that or people do this, people are nurses, people are that, they're going to be, you know, I bring that material to the book series. And it's just pretty cool to have that connection with it. And it's going to be, it's going to continue with the length of the series. So stay tuned for all that stuff. Um, Gabriel, not sure where he is exactly, but we do see him with his eyes that are really red. So he's either crying or he's still getting over the sickness, but he's either, I would assume they get to the hilltop. I think everyone's going to converge at the hilltop and he's still alive. So, um, I would assume that Gabe, father Gabriel goes to the hilltop, uh, with the doctor and, uh, still alive and does okay. And does something, hopefully he does something epic. Father Gabriel has a storyline that of big things, and we got to get to Father Gabriel a little bit more. There should be more storyline for him because we know how it is, and it ends up with the whispers and Father Gabriel because not sure if he gets that death, but that's <laughs> that's a death that we do want to see. I know I do for it. So not because of Father Gabriel, but the, the, the comic connection for it. So, um. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Why do sickness come and go without question? Um, not sure what you mean, M. King. Um, but uh, yeah, exactly. I release you. Exactly, Tudor. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Beta up in the house. I still feel that Beta would be awesome to be played by Kane or uh, the Undertaker from the walk from uh, the WWE. So uh, I'm gonna go for about five more minutes. So ask your questions for me to answer. Uh, the last stand, you know, and when Daryl's like, all of us together are going to be our worst nightmare. And I think they will. I think they're going to come around. I think they're going to get some wins, some of that. So um, thank you, uh, Swo Go Zylo Takedown. Um, appreciate you guys checking out the channel and the taking the time for it. We got a lot of big things coming for the channel when The Walking Dead is in session and not. We'll be doing more stuff. I'm also trying to think about an idea of doing probably initially a small little web series for YouTube, for the channel, for a oh, fight for us. I'm trying to get a couple of things together, like some cosplay stuff or some, you know, replica weapons that I could use. The walkers would probably, or the walkers, the zombies would be a problem um, just because we don't have prosthetics and stuff like that too. But it could just be the storyline of things to be act out for it in the house. I know my friend um, wants the idea, but he lives in New Jersey, so I don't know how that would work with me being in Florida. Um, yep, so we'll see. Anything you want to know, I'm usually thinking, thank you, Mike. Um, Kane would be an awesome beta. I agree. Paul, uh, opinions on Sadiq, Alexia. Um, just not enough to know. I don't like the idea of Sadiq being the cause of Carl's death because he kind of is, you know, ipso facto or however you want to think of it because he was Carl was there saving him if Carl just stayed in the house <laughs> if he stayed in Alexandria he would still be alive and no problem for it um Sadiq's impact is probably my mercy prevails over my wrath the idea that keeping people alive is stronger than taking people out so I think it'll be a lasting character it'd be pretty crappy if he came in Carl died and then he died and there was kind of nothing useful out of this not sure if Sadiq will connect, you know, like Oceanside or something like he does in the comics. But hopefully there is just some storyline that makes sense with Sadiq, especially with Rosita. Sadiq, you know what I'm talking about if you know the comics. So do you think we'll see more of Crazy Rick after Carl dies? I hope so. I hope Carl's death makes Rick go crazy. Clear mode. We have Clear Morgan and Clear Rick. And Carol and Daryl, those savers won't stand a chance. That's for sure. Like Nabila said. You versus all of them, they don't stand a chance. That's right. So what if fear is the origin of the Commonwealth? I think that would be interesting. That would be kind of cool if, if fear brings something to the table, not takes something from The Walking Dead. It actually brings something to the universe. I would love for that to happen. I would love for that to be... It just sucks because you watch the first three seasons and they make no sense and they're, they're kind of stupid. 
I mean, they do bring a little bit to the table, but the fourth season is going to be nothing related to the first seasons, especially with Travis and this and Texas. And, you know, it's going to connect a little bit with Crazy Dog and Walker and, and everything, but it just doesn't make sense to be the first two seasons have no connection to that whatsoever. You could have just started watching basically the very end of season two into season three, and then right there you didn't have to watch the first season and a half of it so um uh da, 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 da. thank you janet I, I i missed you guys i missed i missed you guys this past sunday even though i was in cozumel having some good weather it's pouring raining out now in florida and it's kind of dreary out but cozumel was cool they, people got some great pictures of jeffrey Dean morgan norman Reedus, and diana kruger norman's girlfriend on the boat if you follow me on instagram they uh i have some I have some of the pictures i have a great picture that i love my wife makes fun of me but i love the picture i took of alana masterson and her uh her baby not baby i guess toddler now marla is probably like two years old but uh they're holding at the airport they're looking up at each other it's like the cutest little picture that i got them taking a pic. I got a t- took a picture of them. I had to zoom in a little bit, but it's very cool of Marlo and um, Alana Masterson's baby. But there you go, guys. That's my hour. Um, I'm going to be doing more and more things. If you uh, can help out, spread the word of the PT channel. We'll be doing more things. I still have my goal of 100,000. We're coming up on 49,000, 50,000. We're going to be probably doing. We'll see. I might do a giveaway, a quiz, something. I'll be doing something, but I want to do something for you guys for that. And then, you know, when I hit 100,000, I'll be doing several, several giveaways for that. You know, maybe a couple of different tiers of stuff and whatever. But I have a lot of things, you know, in the in the in in my mind for you guys. And I'm excited for the future for it. Um, thank you guys for joining me this Super Bowl Sunday, February 4th. Three weeks, guys. We're getting there. It will be here before you know it. So we have this live stream that is done. Then we have next week, another one, and then I'll have a live stream that day. So in three more live streams, guys, we'll be ready for The Walking Dead Season 8 for it. I'm excited for everything. Thank you, Jeep Jeep, for just subscribing. I appreciate it, guys. Book series, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Kindle versions, Amazon.com. The link is in the description here and in every video, or you can just search for it. It's fight, the number four, and then U-S. So I'm excited for those things, guys. You can see the people that write stuff in here that read the book series. They like it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Haley, Turtle, Finky, Brian, Promore, Jerry Lynn, M. King, Janet Person, R.M., Joanne, Jeep Jeep, Andrew, Tudor, Christy Wells, Big Sexy, Andrew, Paul Eagle, Mike Allen, Haley, Jeep, all the, you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Enjoy Super Bowl Sunday. I know I'm going to enjoy the commercials. I will be posting more and more panels for you guys. Stay tuned. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And thank you for watching, guys.